Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 90. This week I'm going to be talking about the projectile sensor, which is right here, connected to the camera axe. This setup is typically used to photograph bullets in flight. The basic way that this uh, sensor works is it has two photo gates here, one here and one here, and as the bullet travels through here, the speed is recorded and then a delay is added to a flash so that the flash triggers when the bullet is a certain number of inches away from the, the second of the photo gates. So basically, when it exits here, you can say three inches, and then when the bullet is at sort of this point, three inches away from this gate, the uh, flash would trigger. So setup is really easy and uh, works great, but as with any sensor in the, the real world, there's going to be some error. And uh, basically this week, I'm going to look into that error, quantify it so that people know how much air to expect with different speeds of uh, projectiles. So the thing that really got me looking into this was that nine times out of 10 with my pellet gun, I would see 946 uh, feet per second. And I was like, well, clearly it's not always that speed. Why am I, what's, what's causing that granularity in the equation? And I'm doing all this fixed point math in the uh, code for the camera acts, So I was kind of worried about that. And I, I basically added a bunch of debug code to walk through um, the uh, fixed point math to make sure everything was coming out right. And basically it was. So what that left was the timer and the timer on the Atmel 328 microchip that I'm using is four microseconds is sort of the finest granularity I could get out of the timer and it turns out after I you know basically added all of this debug code to figure out where all of the error was coming from it was basically all coming from the granularity of that clock so there was nothing I could end up doing to improve the accuracy of the uh, projectile sensor by modifying the code. I'm now completely convinced it's a, it's all of the errors coming from uh, this hardware limitation. Uh, the only way to really get around this is to use a faster microcontroller. But with the current camera axe and the current projectile sensor, this is just a hard limit. So at this point, I was like, okay, I understand where the limitation is coming from. Let's figure out how big it is so people can uh, decide whether the projectile sensor and the camera axe uh, will work for them. So it's all about analyzing the error of this four microsecond granularity at this point. And that's sort of what I'm doing here. So uh, 946 feet per second is close to 950 feet per second. So that's sort of where I sort of started with um, the math part. And I was sort of trying to analyze at this point what uh, mathematically my error is from this four microseconds granularity issue and then I back referenced the real world and confirmed that you know this math here is going to line up properly with what I'm seeing in the real world so it all works out um, I'll, I'll walk you through the math real quick here uh, basically I'm not that great at math but with physics I know if I keep the units if I get the units right the math will work out. So that's what I'm doing here, right? I, I sort of wrote it out to sort of make that very obvious. So right, I'm multiplying this 950 feet per second by 12 inches per foot, and these um, feet labels cancel out, and you end up with inches per second. So now we're at 11,400 inches per second. So all I'm looking at here are the labels, and once I know that the labels work out, um, the math will just sort of fall out from, from the labels. And uh, then I wanted to get into uh, how uh, much error there is in four microseconds. So I multiply our inches per second by one second per uh, one million microseconds and then by the four microseconds from above and I end up that I get 0 0.0 four, five, six inches of error in four microseconds. And uh, that, the, the projectile sensor over here, uh, the distance between these two uh, 
sensors is two inches. So that's where I get this two inches from. So I divide the inches of error by two and th that causes the uh, inches to cancel out. And all we're left with is this amount of error. I turn that into a percent and we've got 2.28% error. So <clears throat> how much granularity are we having um, at this 946 feet per second? So if I just multiply that by the percent, I get this 21 0.66 feet of granularity. So that basically means that there, the, the only step below that is about 20 feet lower, so 926 feet, or 20 feet higher, which is you know 966 feet. So um, that's why all of the, I mean, the gun is approximately shooting at 950 feet per second, so that's why almost all of the projectiles are reading at 946 feet per second. It's because it has to go, you know, 20 feet higher or lower to measure, measure a different value. And we're just not seeing that variability in the pellet gun, hence it's always, or almost always, reporting back this number. So, you know, 21 feet sounds like quite a bit of an error, but it's really not very much percent, right? It's only 2% of error. So at this point, I sort of got interested in what does the error look like at different speeds. So this middle, so th this column is the speed of your bullet. Um, I think about 3,200 feet per second is about the fastest a gun bullet will go. Um, and here's a, a percent of error that you see, and you see that, you know, as the speed of your bullet increases, that four microseconds of granularity increases uh, the amount of error. So this basically shows, so 950 feet, I didn't write this on this table because I just wanted to do, you know, a doubling kind of thing here, but um, that would put, you know, right in between here, which is 20 feet of granularity. So you can see, you know, at the highest speed, your, your amount of uh, granularity is actually quite high. Um, and your error actually starts getting pretty high there too at, you know, 7.7% .7 of error at this highest speed projectile I calculated. Um, that's kind of where we're at there. I guess the other important thing to note is sort of how much does this move your bullet in the scene? And I didn't write that on this table, but I've got a calculator here. And so I'm just gonna multiply the percent error by how far you would position the bullet um, from the second gate in the sensor. So I typically use 15 inches. So if I'm using 15 inches um, and I have this 1.92% of error, that gives me a, about, about a quarter of an inch of error on the projectile. And that's actually what we're seeing. Now I don't have these other guns, but, um, or I don't have a way of having projectiles at these other speeds, but uh, since it's, you know, my, my data point says that this is really pretty solid data, and I think that, you know, basically from this you can sort of see that, you know, if you have one of these really high speed um, projectiles, let's say you've got the 3200 uh, feet per second uh, projectile, so you've got seven point six eight percent so what you'd end up with for this 3200 feet per second if you had the sensor 15 inches away from your target would be one a little over one inch of error which seems like a lot but you have to remember that a rifle um, with that speed would actually tend to have a, a bit bigger bullet um, so your inch of variability isn't actually going to be that bad so, I mean, we have proof that the projectile sensor works really great for pellets, and I've had people use it with higher speed rifles. Um, I don't think anybody's ever gone up to 3,000 feet per second, but they've done sort of 2,500 feet per second, and it worked fine there. So, this is kind of just a, a mental exercise to prove that the amount of error we're getting is a reasonable amount, and that's why we're seeing um, you know, these small quarter inch 
variabilities in the position of the bullet. I think it's still the best system out there, but uh, it's nice to know that the code is not causing any of the uh, error, which I was a little concerned about before this. Um, now I know it's just a, a hardware limitation and the only way to uh, make things better is to get uh, a finer granularity timer. So that'll be maybe something that I keep in mind for a, a future version of the, the Camera Axe. Thanks for watching.